All right, guys, welcome to the Marcus and Mike show. We are having a malfunction with the old camera system here, but we'll get it figured out tomorrow for, for you guys. But as always, I am Mike at mbuck41 on the Twitter machine and Marcus the Freak here at Marcus the Freak on the Twitter webs as well. Man, right, the other voice you guys hear today. Marcus, how are you doing today, bud? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Michael. What's going on? Uh, well, you know, your Texas Rangers and my Kansas City, C- City Royals started a series last this past night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys got us, or uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, on Tuesday night we, we started a series. We beat you guys 11-5. You come back in, you beat us 6-1, and right now right. the Royals are up 1-0 to zero in top of the second inning. So that's kind of a kind of exciting uh, weekday or a mid a midweek baseball series. It's always fun to watch. Uh, you get to really interact with the fans. If you're ever out there, um, you know, uh, trying to catch some good players and and some good games. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday baseball is always fun to watch. Uh, oh my uh, god, I forgot I forgot that was on right. Yeah, it's, now well, that that's on right now. Damn, I'm gonna cut on, that on in a minute. Yeah. On. Right now, we they are in beautiful Kansas City, Missouri, city of fountains, and uh, we're hitting dingers, man. <laughs> noon, noon, yeah, noon on a what, noon on a Thursday. That's I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, it's yeah. Pretty crazy start time. Man, isn't sometimes it? I cut on these. Yeah, sometimes I cut on these games. Sometimes I cut it on the, the Rangers channel, the Astros channel, and I, usually it's like the tape delay or like it's the it's the one from the previous night. Right. And so this one's live, though. Yep, Kansas City's up one in the second inning. Yep, yeah, okay, so, there you go. So speaking of the previous night here, the Bucks did beat the Raptors, as we both per- both per- both predicted here. Uh, yeah. Lopez kind of carries the team uh, toward the toward the end there. Uh, I believe it's Brooke, yeah. Lo- Brooke Lo- Lopez. Uh, I got to get yes. those two mixed up all that like, just like all the time. But – what are your yeah, thoughts I do too, of, Robin. Like they, they look so similar, Robin and Brooke. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on that game? I mean, we kind of predicted the Bucks to win, and it was going to be a well-fought game. The Bucks win 108 to 100, kind of of a high scoring, like from from, from like well, what we thought what we thought was going to be lower 90s to yeah. high to, to high to high 80s. So if this series continues the way the way it is. Who do you think this favors? Does it favor the Raptors or does it favor the Bucks? No, um, no it's, it favors the Bucks. That was unfortunate last night uh, by Toronto having control of that game for most of the game until the end. Um, I think they, you know, this is one of those ones. They might look back on this one. They wait. They squandered a Kyle Lowry thirty-point game. Yeah. Um, you can't. That, that's you know you don't know if that you're going to yeah. see that again. I mean, he has the capabilities. He's an all-star, but we all know his past performance in the playoffs uh, haven't been. As, as, as good as his regular seasons when he makes the all-star teams. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what happened last night was, was classic Bucks though. Um, it, it's funny because Toronto just got a taste of its own medicine because Toronto usually bottles people up at the end of, in the end of games and where the other team can't score. Um, this time, Milwaukee did it to Toronto. They, they, they got – Toronto's not used to that defense getting put on their butt, and they got, they got, they got handled defensively. And Kyle Lowry only um, – He's the only person that scores in the fourth quarter. So, and then Toronto was giving it to Milwaukee. See, something they're, they're not used to. Milwaukee used to dishing out really great defense, and Toronto gave it to them all game. Uh, they bottled up the uh, Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and uh, he had to find other people. And fortunately for, um, fortunately for um, Milwaukee, Lopez came through, seven footer, and he and it, he's capable of doing this. He he hit shots. This is what he this is what he's done for the past like five six years of his career. He didn't used to be this good of a three point shooter, but man, I love when players turn it around and they become something. They have they work on their game, something um, that they weren't good at earlier in their career. Yeah, what so, is like Lopez is hitting his shots, seven footer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it is. Ahead, yeah, it is kind of crazy to me, like because he has been around. I mean, it seems like he's like he has been around for quite quite a long time now, like going on seven, yeah. eight, maybe nine years even. Um, but yeah. his career high was 29 points, uh, and he hit that last night. 13 of the like of those points was in the fourth, was in the fourth quarter. Uh, so for the, so for, uh, for him to have such a great game, and then the uh, Greek freak having 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 24 points, like right. that that 
that to me has to be a little concerning for the Raptors just a tad bit. Um, I am glad that Kyle Lowry finally stepped up in his one series, like, you know, well, like his one game in this series, like he would have, right. to have a good game. <laughs> uh, too bad it came on game one. Uh, for the Raptors' sake, they kind of wish it would have came game six or game seven. Uh, so this, like, if, 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 if I'm a Raptors player, coach, and or fan, I'm a little concerned. But then at this, but then then at the same time, we are supposed to lose these first few games on the road. Hopefully, they they can bounce back uh, tomorrow. I believe they play uh, Friday. Yeah, uh, they play Friday at eight o'clock. Uh, hopefully, the Raptors can can like bounce yeah. back and steal that win uh, that they like. I like I predicted they will get, but then you have also predicted Milwaukee will start off the series two. Yeah. Uh, are you still still uh, still uh, planning that there? Like you think they'll? Yeah, I, I, I think everybody's going to win their home games, so I think it's going seven and. And you have Toronto egg like, winning tomorrow, which could very well happen. Yeah. It depends on the mentality of Toronto. Um, they have championship caliber type players. Uh, Ibaka has been in the finals. Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green um, should have won back to back finals. Um, <laughs> they won one championship, they, they, but they, they've hit. Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard have been in big, big moments, bigger than uh, bigger moments than they're going to face tomorrow or uh, Friday night. Um, so if, if Toronto comes back. Um, and shows Milwaukee, hey, you know, we let one slip away. That's fine. We're going to come back and bite you. See, non-championship teams and younger teams, this would really hurt them. Yeah. Um, losing a game like this, controlling the game for the whole the whole time, and then coming back and, and, and letting Milwaukee come back um, and win the game in the last three minutes. Um, so that would – non-championship teams, that would really hurt them. But I don't see Toronto as that way. Um They've got players that have been there before, and so I think that I think Toronto's going to come back and make it a, another uh, exciting game down the stretch. And I love this time, this kind of basketball. Yes. Um, it, it's uh, to me, I mean, it's a little better than what you're going to watch tonight with Portland and Golden State. That's basically a 21 game, um, and you know, just who makes who makes the jump shots. Um, yeah, right. Now, Golden State does play really good defense, but they play defense in spurts if they want to. But yep. but but you check this out. But the the um, the other night, they really didn't play defense in Spurs. They, they kept that up almost the entire game, and Portland kind of just played into it. But um, this is, yeah, this is a really great series for me to watch this Toronto-Milwaukee. To me, it's must-see TV because it's old-school basketball. Um, who's, who's open takes the shots. Two, uh, just uh, one one-star player on each team. There's not this collection of NBA All-Stars that are just, that are just you know, trying to take over games and stuff like that. This is one great player to another Giannis and, and Kawhi, and let's see which of their others, their other teammates, play better. And it, you know, if you notice, Chris Middleton struggled yesterday. I'm telling you right now, he's not used. To, he, he's had a little free wheeling and dealing here. Um, he's not. Toronto plays great defense. They're just not going to let Chris Middleton score 30. Um, they, they, they. It's like pick a poison. They went ahead, and it's not like they didn't guard uh, Lopez um, to get his 29. But they, they were. That, that was the one where they were going to let him um, shoot some open shots. Um, when uh, when Greek Freak, but Greek Freak is great now. It, this is the thing about the Greek Freak. He has t- he has turned his uh, game around. Um, he's now finding people. Um, it, it's it's tougher than you think throwing it out to double teams and making that right pass to see who's open. Yeah. And last night it happened to be Lopez. And so we'll see what happens moving forward. But man, this to me this is must see TV. I love this Milwaukee Toronto series. It's defense and 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 fundamentals of basketball. And it's it's it, and Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green learned that from Pop. And so Mike Budenholzer learned that from Popovich. So this is almost like a Spurs series, the former coach versus a couple of former players. This is really good stuff for me to watch. Yeah, and 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 as I stated yesterday, I really think this series, this Toronto Milwaukee series, will be better than the NBA Finals series and also the uh, the Western Conference series as just as well. So, so if you really? are a, if if you are a basketball fan or if if you are a casual basketball fan, this is the series that you need to tune in to like watch. This is going to be a great back and back and forth b- 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 battle. It is basically who who has the last haymaker landed at the at the end of the game is going to win this game 
or the like the yeah uh, I, where, where I'll just agree with you a little bit. Now I love your 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 analogy on this series. This series is absolutely fa- fabulous. Golden State going up against Toronto's defense or Milwaukee's defense. That right there gets me so excited. I, I mean, like uh, the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers played really good defense on the Warriors, and look yeah. what happened. The Warriors lost, one of their right. only finals losses. They, man, they are going to see defense like they've never – Golden State Warriors are going to see defense like they've never seen before in about three years once they face Milwaukee or Toronto, either one. That's going to be – I cannot wait to see how Curry and Klay Thompson jack shots on Kawhi and Danny Green. Um, or my, or or on the flip side of that, uh, Brogdon and Connaughton and Eric Bledsoe. These guys play defense and get after your butt. I mean, they th- this man that is really must. I'm gonna be so emotionally invested in this year's finals because of the defense that can be played on Golden State. Like the non-defense is being played on Golden State right now. They're not gonna have any of that room uh, to to move, maneuver around. This is gonna be great, and Golden State's gonna need every bit of six foot ten Kevin Durant to beat the Milwaukee Bucks or the Toronto Raptors. I cannot wait until May 30th. That's the day of the finals. I've marked it down already. <laughs> May 30th, it's a – yeah, it, I cannot wait to see that. that that's going to be absolutely awesome to see. You might sell me on on the on the NBA's finals being better than the Eastern Com- Conference finals if, if I continue to see basketball being played like we saw last night in game one. You might make yeah. me a believer if I continue to see that, but, like, right now, I, I just don't see that see that happening. Like, I just think Golden State is just so much – they have more firepower than, like, any of these teams have, like, ever faced. And, like, I just don't know if they can hang, like, with, like, with that. But, but – Yeah, just, and then real, real quick question, the final start May 28th. That's a Thursday night. May 30th is – I'm getting ahead of myself. May 30th is game two. So May 28th, I've circled on my calendar, is Thursday night is the NBA Finals. Well, either way, that is a little over 12 days away, maybe even 11 yeah. days away. So just a week and a half, guys, and uh, Marcus will be on cloud nine again here. Yes. But before we start talking about the Golden State Portland series, I want to give a little bit of breaking news, some um, NFL action. Patrick Peterson just got suspended by the NFL for for, for, for performing for performance enhancing drugs. Um yeah. Do you think this hurts his do you think after this suspension his career is done? No, I think he's got he he's still in, in the prime of his career, but it was a little puzzling to me. This guy's always asking to be traded. And yeah. so he's using performance enhancing drugs. He's gonna I mean what well, I don't I don't get it. Like, you know, you you're not gonna be you're not gonna be traded like that, just hurting your team like that. I mean I didn't that's just weird to me, you know. I'll, I'll trade me, trade me, trade me, but yet I'm going to be suspended for six games for performance enhancing drugs. I mean, dude, what are you doing? And so now that's that really hurts his team. I don't think Arizona's going to be that good anyway this year. I mean, uh, I think they'll be improved, but uh, they're going to have a rookie quarterback. It's it, it, we'll see what happens there. Um, now they're now they're uh, uh, they're they're. Draft pick Byron Murphy is going to have to be thrust in there. He would have already probably been thrust in there a little bit, but um, uh, Byron Murphy now is going to have to play a larger role. Uh, uh, the rookie out of out of Washington right away, as opposed to you know learning under <laughs> learning under um, Patrick Peterson for a few weeks. Right. And so we'll see what happens there. I mean, they have a decent secondary. Um, I don't think it's anything great. I mean, I, I guess Alfred's going to start with Murphy. Uh, Byron Murphy, the rookie, I'd, I'd pick on him all day. I forget who Arizona plays week one, but that's I'd pick on Murphy all day. He's not even a press uh, man corner. I'd, I'd let him have it. And then they have DJ Swearinger back there, who I've watched with the Texans for about three years before we let him go. I think he went to Washington or Arizona. I, I, he went to Arizona, then Washington. And DJ Swearinger is a heck of a, a all-time safety. He comes up and, and, and makes the hits on you. Um, but uh, in pass coverage, he's, he's horrific. So the Arizona's got to starting uh, starting a week one. They've got a rookie corner and a and a safety that uh, is basically comes up and makes hits. He doesn't play the back end, and uh, uh, their free safety Buddha Baker um, is pretty good, but uh, he's you know he's uh, he's still young too. Kid also out of Washington, so we'll see what happens there. I'd, I'd pick on Arizona secondary man without Patrick Peterson. Um, expect uh, who, where were you? What, who are you playing in fantasy, Michael? Have you got? But Arizona, your first few weeks, you, you go ahead and you, you, you start those guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, Patrick Peterson and the Kansas City Chiefs were rumored 
impossible trade list like this past like yes. this like this like this past this past season. I think Arizona is playing for a uh, is playing for a number one overall pick again this next yeah. year. So probably yeah. if he is suspended for six weeks, just like what you said, um, I would look to trade him now. You know, see if the Kansas City Chiefs are a possible trader still. Uh, you know, maybe somebody else that needs some secondary help. I mean. Yeah, no, no, that's possible. I mean, if I don't think I wouldn't give up a first round pick, even though Kansas City, you know, in my opinion, Kansas City is going to be like 12 and four. So yeah. you're talking about a 28th or 29th pick like they had this past year. And then they got um, Frank Clark for it, which is a great. I might think about doing that again. If you can land a Frank Clark with your first round pick and then land a Patrick Peterson with your other yeah. first round pick, and you know, these aren't, these aren't going to be top. These aren't top 15 picks now. You're giving away 28 and 29. And right. Then, I mean, worst case, maybe 26. I would – but I, would, I wouldn't I even throw my first-round pick at uh, uh, Kansas City. I would throw my um, second-round pick. Second-round picks are at a premium as well. So that's – you're talking like maybe like the 55th pick overall. Hell, T.O. got traded for a second-round pick in his prime uh, to the Eagles. So this isn't out of the realm of possibility. I People that don't understand the NFL, don't understand the NFL draft, might might go, oh my God, Patrick Peterson, a second round pick, should have got better than that. No, second round picks come in the NFL and they start. So yeah. no, that, that's actually, um, they're, and they're they're projected to be really good players. Um, the, the NFL draft, that's where it's different than the NBA draft. You could have a fourth round pick in the NFL um, start and 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 be a productive player, big time player, plug and play. You, it's very rare you get a, a late uh, second round pick in the NBA and then he just uh, he starts right away and averages 15 points a game for his career. That's you know, usually all your 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 money and all your really good players in the NBA draft are first rounders. That's not the case in the NFL. The NFL is a second round, third round, fourth round. You get value there. So Patrick Peterson, yeah, you know what? If I was Kansas City, I would call them right now and say, hey, you want my second round pick of the 2020 draft? Yep. Patrick Peterson, right now, Kansas City will wait six games for him. That's absolutely no problem. And, and real quick on your Kansas City Chiefs, they just got Darren Lee. Yep. Um, I was getting former, ready to uh, say yeah. that. Okay, yeah, former former high pick from the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. Darren Lee's a pretty good player. Um, and listen, Kansas City linebackers, not worried about them at all now. Nope. And you got Anthony Hitchens and Damian Wilson. You got Darren Lee to the mix. Um, listen, we talked about this before. Anthony Hitchens is a good linebacker. Uh, he led the Big Ten in tackles. Um, when he, uh, and then also Damian Wilson played for Minnesota. He led the Big Ten in tackles right after uh, Anthony Hitchens left. So you have two players that led the Big Ten in tackles. And then you're getting Darren Lee. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not the, – the, 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 and also Frank Clark. The Kansas City – listen, my, my point is, a couple of months ago, Kansas City Chiefs linebacking core looked like a um, – The worst the weakness. Not, yeah, it, 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 now it looks like it's not bad. It may even be a strength. And let me play – let me throw another gym at you. Um, Jerry Johnson of Texas, number 33 in your Longhorn program, was a heck of a linebacker for, for the UT Longhorns, Okay. Yeah, this guy made impact plays, and he's a heck of – like, there's maybe not a better athlete on the Kansas City Chiefs roster right now. Gary Johnson was an undrafted free agent. He signed the undrafted free agent with the Chiefs. I expect Gary Johnson to make the team as a Kansas City Chief and, and play well his first year, especially he's going to be on special teams. I mean, that, that's, that's, that, that might be a specialty. But Gary Johnson will find his way onto a Kansas City uh, – uh, Chiefs uh, game, he won't be. I don't. I don't think he's going to be practice squad. I think Gary Johnson makes this squad um, for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs out of UT. Well, I watched this kid for the last three years at UT, and he's he's a heck of a player. How he went undrafted blows my mind. And then we'll talk about we'll talk about. There's a couple of uh, college basketball players how they didn't get invited to the combine kind of blows my mind as well. But yeah, Kansas City Chiefs linebacking court could be a point of strength instead of a weakness. Yeah, and just uh, hitting on Lee real fast here. He was a Jets former uh, first 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 round pick a couple years ago, yeah. and then the and then the Kansas City Chiefs gave up a six round pick for him. Yes. Yeah. So the yeah. Kansas, the Kansas City Chiefs are making moves. I was really upset like with them earlier in the off season with 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 and they let Eric Perry go, uh, Ford. Yeah. And and we traded somebody else. I can't remember the name off the off the top of my head. But uh Yeah. I was pretty upset about that. But but now I see that uh, now now I see the ball starting to roll and, yeah. and like moves are being made. 
and I'm getting, I feel a little bit better about our situation now. Uh, now quickly, let's go ahead and hit on the college players that, that you just, uh, mentioned mm-hmm. like about not being invited to the draft. How do you feel about that? Well, no, here, well, here's the hit. Well, yeah, there, there, there's a couple of players that weren't even invited to the uh, Chicago, uh, uh, pre-draft combine there. And, you know, everybody talks about weak draft, weak draft. Okay. Okay. I understand it's not top heavy. You know, there may not be, you know, out of the top 10, you know, five hall of famers, there might be just one or two or maybe none. Um, we, we don't know yet, but, um, I just I just found this out right now. There were 77 players uh, invited to the uh, combine there in Chicago. Uh, Luke May was not invited. Luke May uh, out of North Carolina, six foot eight, not a great athlete, but Luke May's paid his dues, man. He's uh-huh. he's been in North Carolina since forever, and he's made some big shots. I'm shocked he's not. He reminds me of uh, Tyler Hasbro. We lost it there. Yes. So you were talking about May? About not getting drafted. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where where, where did you leave me at? Uh, Luke May not getting drafted 6'8", and then I said he reminded me of Tyler Tyler Hansborough. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, Luke Luke May, um, not 6'8", made a lot of big shots in his North Carolina career. Uh, He's been there forever. And – and for him, you know, that's a kind of a disrespect for him not to be invited to one of the top 77 players to the combine. That's mm-hmm. a little bit of disrespect, um, I believe. And your Tyler Hansborough comparison, a little, Tyler Hansborough was a, uh, played in the NBA because he's a little bit better athlete than, uh, than Luke May. Luke May's not a great athlete. So Tyler Hansborough is probably why he was played in the NBA for a few years, had a cup of coffee for a couple of teams or whatever. I think he played for the Pacers, Hansborough. Um, but the better athlete than Luke May. And then Chris Clemens. Um, uh, out of Campbell, 30 points per game. Uh, been one of the best guards in the country, and he only five nine. But okay, but he's not invited to the combine. A guy that was 30 points a game, that was fabulous with the basketball in his hands. Uh, I think he could make an NBA roster. I know he's going to be in the D League. And then the one that really got me was Tyrus Battle out of Syracuse, um, six five, and an All ACC performer. Tyrus Battle of Syracuse. He's not invited to the combine, and so. That just kind of freaked me out a little bit, especially the battle one. Actually, that, that one got me that – took, that one took me for a loop a little bit. Um, and then everybody says this is a weak draft, but when you got those three players that didn't get invited to the combine, that's a little weird. I don't think this is a weak draft. When you have when you have Chris Clemens and, and Luke May and, and especially Tyrus Battle not even invited to the combine, the top 77 players. So, it, man, this, I think this is going to be a really good draft. I, and I don't mean it's going to be top heavy. I don't mean there's going to be a lot of Hall of Famers out of this draft or All-Stars. But you'll have contributors in this draft, even first and second round, for many years to come. Yeah, and just uh, speaking speaking of that, the last two guys, they they kind of surprised me as well. But May doesn't really surprise me because he has been doing it for so long. He is he is not going to wow you on his jump or the long jump or his speed or like anything like just like that. So he really has nothing else to show you slash prove to you in the combine so so yeah so why kind of have a spot for him when there's nothing left for him to prove i mean that's the only thing i can think of like on that point uh, like well not, i mean I, I just don't think he's the athlete probably that's going to be in the nba for many years i mean he would have to he would have to really you know get some strength in him he really have to shoot the ball really well to make an NBA roster. He, yeah, he was the third one on that list. Really, I was really shocked at Chris Clemens, 30 points a game for uh, uh, for Campbell, and yeah. then Tyrus Battle, all ACC performer of Syracuse. I mean, Tyrus Battle's made some big shots in the NCAA tournament, and he's been a pretty darn good player. Like I said, I think he was second team all ACC. For those two not to get the invite to the combine. Um, and then also, they, I think they invited Taco Fall, yeah. um, seven foot six. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, 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 Taco Fall will not make an NBA roster this year. Um, he probably so? – Taco. yeah, no, he, he is seven six player, but, yeah, he basically has no skill. He's not he's not bowl bowl with skills. <laughs> you know, so Taco Fall is just a guy just going to stand in the way. He, the NBA game is not for him, to be honest. Uh, he might be able to play overseas or something like that. He's seven six. He's a draw. He's something to look at. Everybody goes, oh, wow, he won't make an NBA roster. He just doesn't have the skill set. And so – 
um, that, that's where I would question the Chicago pre-draft camp there, um, that combine. So you're going to take a player like Taco Fall, but you're not going to take Tyrus Battle. I, I Yeah, I, I would have an issue with that um, if I could talk to them. I, I really have a, You don't take Chris Clemens, 30 points a game, score, you know, led the NCAA or second in the NCAA in scoring, but you're going to take Taco Fall. It's just he's just at a draw and attraction. It's almost like a, a sideshow. Well, like, you know, so. buddy, but he, but he also almost led UCF to upsetting Duke in the second round game yeah. uh, because when like he was in there, USC looked 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 like they were going to handle Duke, and the minute he yeah. And, yeah. and the minute he minute he fouled out like of that game, I mean, yeah, they looked like a whole brand new team. So yeah. uh, I I agree I agree with that. Zion had a little hard time. Zion and RJ Barrett, those boys had a little at hard time well, <laughs> shooting you're, getting to the rim. Shorter, you're going to have a little bit of problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun to watch. I mean, but the NBA game's a little different. It's up, right. a little more up and down. I mean, he might make the roster, but he's gonna he he will never. He'll be the he'll be the the uh, the uh, the uh, 2019 20 21 version of Chuck Nevitt back <laughs> in the day. Chuck Nevitt was seven foot five and. Um, I think Chuck Neville was actually a better athlete than Taco Fall, um, but uh, he, he'll basically ride the bench. He might make the team because you, you, you know, you never know. It's, it's about dollars, man. And 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 Taco Fall at the end of your bench. <laughs> I mean, you know how many autographs you get to sign. People are gonna right. come to watch this seven foot six guy walk around. So that's possible. Um, but, and and to your point, man, Aubrey Dawkins, was, yeah, for Central Florida, he was the he was the one that almost beat Duke. He had that chip. He should have made that last second shot. I mean, Aubrey Dawkins, uh, former. Uh, the son of former uh, uh, great Duke player Johnny Dawkins and San, former San Antonio Spur Johnny Dawkins, his son Aubrey Dawkins, um, I, I, you know, he, I think he's going to make an NBA roster. Um, he's a pretty good player. Um, he, he won't be a, a solid contributor, but uh, he's a pretty good player. Six five, Aubrey Dawkins. I, I mean, man, he almost beat Duke. He and Taco Fall, yeah, almost beat Duke. That, that was pretty fun to watch. And then, yeah, and then uh, Duke eventually fell. But yeah, that you're, you're right. Taco Fall gave uh, gave Zion some trouble there. Yeah, so uh, we have about ten minutes left in the show here, and uh, I, I, I want to touch on the Golden State Portland game tonight. Game two starts tonight here in about three or four hours, or yeah. like or so. Golden State um, is up one zero in the series. KD is not playing again tonight with that calf strain. Is this a must win for Portland to stay face in this series? Yes, it's a must win. And normally I won't go with the must wins game two because I'm, I, you know, you know me already. I'm always one of those guys that, that say, you know, just because the team goes up 2-0 doesn't necessarily mean the series is over because you got, you just hold serve at home and see what happens. But this is a little bit more unique circumstance than the average um, uh, series because there's no Kevin Durant. Um, Kevin Durant makes Golden State uh, a slam dunk champion almost, if you will. Yep. Um, right now Golden State is a championship team. But with Kevin Durant, I mean, it's a slam dunk championship. So this is – listen, Portland's not going to win this series. But if they want any shot at all to win this series, they're going to have to win game two tonight without Kevin Durant just to make things a little interesting. Um, like I said, they're not going to win this series, but this is a must win. I mean, these guys have got to have pride, Portland Trailblazers. I mean, they looked absolutely horrific the other night. I don't know what that was. Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. I don't know who entered their bodies. I mean, the defense was horrific. Ennis Cantor, and I, and I mentioned this uh, when we were previewing the show, or we were previewing the game in a couple of, day, a couple of days ago show, Ennis Cantor, uh, he can't play against Golden State. Um, he doesn't play defense, okay, very rarely. And then he's a back-to-the-basket player. He's a nice offensive player, but if he's not punishing Draymond Green down there, He's no good, and he doesn't switch out. Collins is the guy that has to play. The, the best five on the court to beat the Golden State Warriors are Zach Collins, who their first-round pick a year ago out of Gonzaga, Steph Curry, uh, Curry's little brother because he can spread the floor, he shoots it, and Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood is a, has major league talent. Um, he, Rodney Hood has all-star talent, and you saw that on display a couple of nights ago when they closed out – Actually, about last week when they were beating uh, the Nuggets in the quadruple overtime. Rodney Hood has big-time supreme talent. He's got to be on the floor to end, uh, at, at the end of games for Portland. Uh, so it's Rodney Hood, Zach Collins, Seth Curry, and McCullum and Lillard. Those are the five. And his canter can't play, really, I mean, against the uh, against the Warriors. Now, they're still probably going to start him 
Um, he'll get some. Hopefully, he'll get some easy buckets. And then, yeah. but at the end of games, you won't see Ennis Cantor in the in the lineup. And also, I think he's going through his his you know his faith, his Muslim faith or whatever. Um, he's going through Ramadan or something. He's not even drinking water and stuff like that. That, I mean, that rarely, very rarely works out. I mean, there's only one Akeem Olajuwon that had to do that, and then still drop 40 on you. Ennis Cantor is not Akeem Olajuwon, so that's that that would that's a little bit uh, troublesome for um, uh, Portland, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a must-win. Answer your question. This is absolutely a must-win for the Portland Trailblazers without Kevin Durant tonight, Game 2. Yeah, I cannot agree more with you. This is definitely a must-win. But they can't win by too much. They they, they, they still have to keep the game, uh, you know, a ten, a, just a 10-point game, just so the Warriors keep KD out for Game 3 and possibly Game 4 as well. Um, because, like, if Portland wins, you know, by five or six points, the Warriors still have faith that they can beat Portland in a series it, 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 minus K D. So, so, so they yes. can't, so they can't win too much. Uh, right. And then once they get back home, Game Three and Game Four, then they need to really ramp it up and just beat the brakes off of the, off of the Warriors at at at, at like at like at least one game to really right. to to really have a chance. In this series, I don't think that is going to happen. I think Game Two is going to be a repeat of of Game One, maybe not a thirty point game, but like a fifteen point game. Uh, it just, I just, I don't know what happened to Portland uh, between Game Seven and then now. Are their legs gone? Are they tired? Um, are they sick? Uh, you yeah. know, like, are they not eating? You know, something is not right uh, well, after watching game one, and I think it's going to repeat in game two as well. Uh, no, I, you know I, what? I, I, I like your logic. I, I I don't think your logic is flawed um, with an organization that, that, that thinks about those things. No, you're, you're probably right on, like, 99% of the organizations um, with your logic there. Don't beat them too bad because then they get scared, push the panic button, and then K- Kevin Durant's got to be there for game three regardless, right? Right. You know, because they're like, oh, my God, we're, we're going to Portland. We just lost one without KD. We definitely need him for game three. But I would be a little surprised if Steve Kerr pushed that panic button. I think the, the, the Warriors not model themselves after the uh, after the uh, Spurs organization. Spurs organization never really pushed those panic buttons. If you weren't ready to play, they, they didn't want you back. They didn't want to bring you back. They, 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 they would forego championships. Um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't risk a player's health. Um, to win a championship. That's not what they do. That's not in their DNA. That happened in 2000 with Duncan. Duncan could have come back from a meniscus tear, but uh, they said, nope, you're going to get totally, fully healthy, and we'll see you um, next year. And that that helped. That, that might have helped Duncan play 19 years in the NBA. Right. So I, I, it'll be interesting to see what the Warriors do tonight, the outcome, because your logic is probably right. I mean, in terms of if they get their ass kicked uh, tonight, um, they might, they might want to bring Kevin Durant back game three. Even at a 70% KD, he might want to come back and say, no, nah, you guys need me in Portland. They just beat us. Right. So this is going to be interesting tonight. Now, what will probably happen, this will be all a moot point, right? Because Golden State will probably beat them by 10, and then, you know, they'll just rest KD for game three, and Portland will get game three. KD will come back for game four, and it'll be a wrap. That's probably your prediction, right? You said they get one? Yeah, game three. Yeah, so that, that's probably what's going to happen. But that's what everybody thinks is going to happen. Portland Trailblazers can change that narrative, Michael, if they win tonight. Then that narrative goes out the window, and then your logic might come in. Um, your hypothesis there about, okay, now we got to bring KD back for game three because now the series is 1-1. I'm hoping that happens because we all know that Golden State's probably going to win this series, but I don't want Golden State resting you know, for a week before uh, Milwaukee and Toronto beat each other up and go to this epic game seven they're probably going to go to here in a few days. Yeah, and you want to bring KD back sooner so he doesn't have more time to rest that quad or, or sorry, that yeah. calf. Uh, so yeah. if he, so say, say, say he comes back and he's only 80 per cent, playing, right. playing on that calf will not improve it. He will never get above 80 percent. And then him going 80 percent into the finals is a positive for the Raptors and or Bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, no, and, and the, also the only good news thing, the, the, the good news about the finals, and we will come full circle on it because I know we're going to end the show soon, but um, 
Milwaukee or Toronto has home court advantage. That's another reason. That's a, it's the first time Golden State's been in the finals where they will not have home court advantage this year. So if they rest KD, say, the whole entire series, which is probably what they're going to do because they'll end up getting rid of Portland in, in five probably, um, KD will come back for the finals on um, on um, uh, May 20. What May, what I say, May 29th or May 30th? I don't know. I gotta look again. I just know it's the end of May. It's weird because the finals this year doesn't start in June. It starts in May. So yeah, I, I, that really piqued my interest. But now KD comes back for the finals, and um, he will be well rested, but he will be a little a little rusty. He won't be in rhythm. Yeah. So to, uh, Toronto or Milwaukee, even with KD in the lineup. They better win those games one and two with KD not, not being in rhythm and being rusty. That's going to be big news. We'll we'll figure that out, though, in a couple of weeks. But, yeah, to your point, uh, um, let, let, let's see. that. We'll, we'll talk about that on tomorrow's show because we'll see if Portland wins. With what you're talking about, they can rush KD back. That's possible because they pushed the panic button to be 1-1. Or will it be 2-0 and KD, they'll just say, yeah, KD, you know, go to, uh, take another week off. Are you predicting a Portland win? Tonight? Yes, uh, yes. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I may look like the fool, but I'm banking on Lillard and McCullum to rise up and not do that again. I'm banking on, and brothers, God, just shoot me for this one, because I don't think Terry Stotts is a great X's and O's coach. That's just, I know he learned um, under Rick Carlisle in Dallas there, but I, and I know Pop praises Rick, uh, Coach Stotts, but uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think he, – he, listen, his defensive game plan and stuff like that, I mean, how could you ever praise Terry Stotts? And then sometimes it looks like he just gives C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard what offense are they running. It's almost having like two uh, lesser James Hardens out there. Just uh, – hey, boys, just jack it up. Um, yeah. So I, I've never really liked his X's and O's, um, Coach Stotts. Um, but we're, but listen, he's on he's, – his ass is on the line tonight. Um, and we'll see what kind of defense he comes up with. And then C.J. McCollum and, and Damian Lillard have a lot of pride. They, 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 they tell people privately they're better than Clay and Steph. Now, if they told me that, I'd say, okay, I wouldn't. But they're not better than Clay or Steph. So we'll, but the pride, ish, the pride thing is there. They have, they, they're going to come out and do a lot better than they did that game one. I don't know who entered their bombs in game one. But uh, I expect to see big-time C.J. McCollum or big-time uh, Damian Lillard, uh, either one of them. And if both of them are going, then Portland's got a shot. All right, guys. So you heard it here first. Marcus is picking Portland. I'm I'm picking Golden State by 15 tonight. Uh, but but as always, guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, see you guys tomorrow, same time, same place. All the good stuff. We'll catch you guys later. We out.